St. Andrew's Church, Tangiers, in the Kingdom of Morocco. On this day, Sunday, the 5th April, 2020. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent, being Palm Sunday also. Thanks for joining us. The collect for Palm Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The readings. The first reading will come from the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 to 12, Psalm 61 and Psalm 62. And the Gospel will come from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 19 to end. The first reading from Zechariah 9, verse 9 to 12 it says rejoice rejoice people of zion shout for joy you people of jerusalem look your king is coming to you he comes triumphant and victorious but humble and riding on a donkey on a colt 
the fowl, the fur of a donkey. The Lord says, I will remove the war chariots from Israel and take the horses from Jerusalem. The bows used in battle will be destroyed. Your king will make peace among the nations. He will, he will rule from sea to sea, from the river Euphrates to the ends of the earth. The Lord says, because of my covenant with you that was sealed by the blood of sacrifices, I will set your people free, free from the waterless pit of exile. Return, you exiles, who now have hope. Return to your place of safety. I tell you now, I will repay you twice over with blessings for all you have suffered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Second reading. Psalms. Psalms 61 and 62. It says, Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. In despair and far from home, I call to you. Take me to a safe refuge, for you are my protector, my strong defense against my enemies. Let me live in your sanctuary all my life. Let me find safety under your wings. You have heard my promises, O God, and you have given me what belongs to those who honor you. Add many years to the king's life. Let him live on and on. May he rule forever in your presence, O God. Protect him with your constant love and faithfulness. So I will always sing praises to you as I offer you daily what I have promised. I wait patiently for God to save me. I depend on him alone. He alone protects and saves me. He is my defender and I shall never be defeated. How much longer will all of you attack someone who is no stronger than a broken down fence? You only want to bring him down from his place of honor. You take pleasure in lies. You speak words of blessing, but in your heart you curse him. I depend on God alone. I put my hope in him. He alone protects and saves me. He is my defender and I shall never be defeated. My salvation and honor depend on God. He's my strong protector. He's my shelter. Trust in God at all times. My people, tell him all your troubles, for he is our refuge. Human beings are all like a puff of breath. Great and small alike are worthless. Put them on the scales, and they weigh nothing. They are lighter than a mere breath. Don't put your trust in violence. Don't hope to gain anything by robbery. Even if your riches increase, don't depend on them. More than once, I have heard God say that power belongs to him and that his love is constant. You, yourself, O Lord, reward everyone according to his deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. To you, o Lord. Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to end. There was once a rich man who dressed in the most expensive clothes and lived in great luxury every day. There was also a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores, who used to be brought to the rich man's door, hoping to eat the bits of food that fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs will come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham at the feast in heaven. The rich man died and was buried, and in Hades, where he was in great pain, he looked up and saw Abraham far away 
with Lazarus at his side. So he called out, Father Abraham, take pity on me and send Lazarus to dip his finger in some water and cool my tongue because I am in great pain in this fire. But Abraham said, Remember, my son, that in your lifetime you were given all the good things while Lazarus got all the bad things. But now he is enjoying himself here while you are in pain. Besides all that, there is a deep pit lying between us so that those who want to cross over from here to you cannot do so, nor can anyone cross over to us from where you are. The rich man said, Then I beg you, Father Abraham and Lazarus, to my father's I take it again. The rich man said, Then I beg you, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to my father's house, where I have five brothers. Let him go and warn them, so that at least will not come to this place of pain. Abraham said, Your brothers have Moses and the prophets to warn them. Your brothers should listen to what they say. The rich man answered, That is not enough, Father Abraham. But if someone were to rise from the dead and go to them, then they would turn from their sins. But Abraham said, if they will not listen to a Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone were to rise from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise to you Lord, Christ. Lord Jesus Christ.
listening to the address. From the readings of today, God in his love is warning us and informing us of the coming judgment. The gospel narrative made it very clear how the judgment will look like. The rich man was enjoying life. He ignored the poor. When death came, he died as well as the poor man. The poor man went to heaven and was comforted, while the rich man found himself in hell. Now the main message for today. I want to inform us that COVID-19 pandemic that is ravaging the world now. God is using this to warn the world in his love because he loves us. God does not want anybody to perish. That means he knows about this pandemic. He allowed it for our own good. We will all agree that before the pandemic, we were living as our lives as we like. Nobody cares about God anymore. Everybody is doing his own thing, his own way. Nothing matters again. God has been ignored. People have boldly said that football, for example, is their religion. They don't want to hear about God anymore. People have turned the world upside down. Changing God's order to a different thing altogether. And God cannot be happy with that. And he knows that if the trumpet should sound, even at this time, nobody will be saved. So he allowed this pandemic to bring a very sound and clear warning to the world. The problem is this. Are we ready to learn any lesson from this? Because if we fail to learn what God is teaching us at this time, then, sorry, I will say, we are in for a more serious problem because God will now humble us again the second time and it will be more disastrous than ever. Nobody can bear it. The plea now is that we should learn from what the rich man said in Luke chapter 16 verse 24. He called for help when it was no longer possible. He requested that his brothers should be informed from somebody sent from heaven. The reply was that there are enough people to inform them. What do you make of all the information that have been reaching you from all angles. The priests are talking. The pastors are speaking. There are other forms through which information is reaching us. What are we doing with all these informations? What do you make of what is happening now? What is your understanding of Corona pandemic? What lesson are you picking from that? Are you taking it as one of those things? Maybe when it finishes, life continues as usual.
What are you waiting for? Before you can take action and stand up to do the right thing. When are you ready to take what God is saying serious? Are you waiting for when it will be too late again? Just as the rich man, he started reacting when it was too late for him. And of course, he could not get anything out of it. They say, make hay when the sun shines. Our sun is still shining now. Let us begin to make hay before it will be too late. God has given us another room to reconcile with him. This is time to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of our lives and hand him over all that is happening now. He know all things. He permitted what is happening, which means that it is good because he wants to bring correction to us through what is happening to us now. Let us depend only on God as in Psalm 62, verse 5 to 7. Our salvation and honor depend only on Him. And how do we do that? Begin now to fear God, repent of your sins, begin, begin to do that which will show repentance. When our King comes, those who fail to listen and repent would see the real meaning of Luke chapter 16, verse 31, which says, if they will listen, if they will listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not, sorry, I take that again, Luke chapter 16, verse 31. If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone were to rise from the dead. If we fail to listen now and do the right thing God is expecting us to do, if we wait on, it will reach a time when it will be too late, we will not be able to do anything again, or even if we do, it will not mean anything. <clears throat> it will be too late. So now is the time. Remembering that real joy is awaiting us when our Lord Jesus Christ will come. That is a very comforting scripture, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, from our first reading. People of God, we have every hope in God. The chance has been made for you and for me to come back to our Maker and rely on Him. If we are able to do this, this is where we will find comfort, we will find consolation. Finally, I want to bring this. I want to let us know that God's love is at its peak this time. He has humbled us in this manner. So let us feel humbled and begin to respect our Maker. He know what we are passing through. He know how he will end the corona pandemic. Look at the whole world humbled in this manner. Everything stands still. 
we are yet to talk about the losses, which is tremendous. Let us begin to fear God. He is a worthy God. He owns heaven and earth. He has proved it to us this time. And I repeat the warning I, I brought before, that it will be unfortunate, very unfortunate, if we miss this chance this time. If, after all this, we just re re return to our normal life, learning nothing, God will be angry with everybody. And we cannot contain, we can't take it. Let us now use this time left because we know that the Lord is coming. All these things are clearing the ground for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is coming in power to judge the world. So whatever is going on now is not supposed to be much of our problem. Only that we are feeling it and we are complaining the way we are feeling it. Let us be careful so that we will not fall prey to the too many, too many news, too many reports we are getting from the social media. And I want to advise at this point that we take care of, be mindful of the kind of news you hear. Any news that does not seem to encourage you and comfort you, please discard that news. Failure to do so, it will simply bring fear, it will bring anxiety, and your problem will be multiple. May God help us, may God help everyone. Let us have hope in Him. He will not disappoint us. He is God. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. I want us to be in the mood of prayer now. We know that the whole world is in trouble. The whole world needs God. The same God we have ignored for so many years. We need Him now. I want you as an individual to begin to call upon God Call upon him, asking him for mercy. Let him show us mercy and come to our aid. 
we want this pandemic to stop. It is only God who can do so. Pray and ask him to come in and help us. Pray also that God will give us the grace to learn from what is happening now, to learn from the lesson he is teaching us. We need the grace to do that. We would not like to miss the chance because he has proved that truly he loves us. That is why he is bringing this as a correction. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray for world leaders, our presidents, our kings. Let us pray for them. Right now, they have too much in their hands. They cannot help matters. But if God steps in, He will bring solution and the whole matter will end. We pray that God will come and help them and use them to finish this matter so that we have our peace again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray and remember the poor and the dying. Many of them are so down that they cannot even afford the food to eat as everybody is indoors. No buying, no selling. Activities are at standstill. Pray that God who knows how to feed his children will remember these people and give them food, comfort them so that they will be able to survive. Hunger will not kill anyone by the special grace of God as we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray for the sick and the dying. So many people are down on, with this sickness. Some are at the point of death. Let us pray for God's healing power to come down and touch those in this condition. Let God quicken them, bring them back to life. That will help us even know that the pandemic is over and we will start rejoicing, we will start praising him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us just use one minute to cry to God as individuals as it is pinching us. Pour your heart out this time. As you pray, believe that God is hearing you and he will grant your request. Speak to him as the father speaks to his children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. You are a prayer answering God. We know that you have heard us in this prayer. Since we cannot gather anymore in the temple, Lord, we believe that you hear us wherever we are. Your children have called upon you, and we believe that you have heard us and you have answered. We look forward to see the result of our prayers, and our mouth will open to bring your glory back to you. These and many more we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Shall we pray to the Father in the words our Savior Jesus Christ taught us? The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day 
our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the final blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. I am the God that He let thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the God that healed thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word I am the Lord, your healer. God's name is more powerful than any disease you can name tonight. You might have received a horrible report from the doctors and told you your disease is incurable. But you know what? There's hope tonight. There is hope because God's promised that He would heal us. I want you to put His word on your lips tonight. Sing His word back to Him. And see if His name isn't more powerful than cancer, than heart disease, or any disease that you can name tonight. Oh, yes. He's your healer. Let's sing it to him. You are the God that healeth me. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord. You.